profitable. Yeah, but we'll start right over here. Yeah. Start at the top of the page. You don't have your Gemara today? You got it today. We wish to be a to Lorecha Kamocha. So that's why he brings you Gemara. Love your fellows, you love yourself. You just fulfilled the mitzvah of a to Lorecha Kamocha. Okay, Baruch Hashem. Okay, <coughs> let's start at the very top again. Boy, me, Rami Barchomo, me, Ravchisto. Rami Barchomo posed the question of Ravchisto, very top. Hareze Gitech, this is Garshibo El Alachish Loshim Yom. Man gives his wife a get. He says, you should not be divorced with this get only after 30 days. Okay? Now, to be able to a get to be valid, you have to put the get in the hand of the woman. Correct? Baholcha. No, in the hand of the woman when it takes effect. Chatzera. Yodo, chatzera. Baholcha v'hini chosa b'tzidushas arabim. And she put it, b'tzidushas arabim. Now, what's tzidushas arabim? A simto is more than a tzidushas arabim. That's off the beaten track. So, Tzidush literally means right alongside the public domain. Mao, like the sidewalk. The, the space between the building and the what and the street. Mao, Omale, Ein Mugareshes. So, Rambe Chomis, so, Rav Chis said, Ein Mugareshes. Why? Medrav Shmuel. The Rav Shmuel, the Amit Havai, was Shitzpurim Noch Mishas Arabim. The Gemara said earlier that if the woman, according to Rav Tarfon, the Rab Tarfan says that the metalplin go to the to the koshel, to the weaker one, whether it's the Balchov or the woman earlier, that's only when the father died, where were the metalplin? It was in Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because Rosh Hashanah, that means it wasn't in the, they didn't take possession yet. But see Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, and the, the area alongside Rosh Hashanah, that's Rosh Hashanah. So just as over there, if it would be there, the wife, could take it for the Ksuba. He wrote that's, that's not her domain. Adra, but Mugureshis. So Mars says, no, just to the contrary. Mid Rav Nachman, the Omer Rav Nachman, Omer of Arvua, Rav Nachman said, Ho'omel Chaveru, Bishoch Porazu, Velosia Knuyuloch, Ad Lachish Losh Mion. Person does a Mishicha, should only be yours, take effect only after 30 days. Now, Mishicha is called Sakinyana, right? Mishicha, when you do Mishicha, once it's finished, it, it doesn't carry on. It doesn't. Yeah? He says, Kona afilo medis bagam. Even if it's an agam, agam is in the swamp, which is the equivalent of tzidu shesarabim or a simto, you require my love. Hainu agam, hainu shesarabim. It means it's not the public area. As long as it's not literally the public area, so just as the agam you acquire, here also you acquire. He says, Lo, it's not comparable. Agam lechud tzidu shesarabim, lechud. The area along tzidu shesarabim is the same shesarabim. Something which is off the beaten track, that's something else. Igadami, there's another version of what happened, of what he answered. Oma le Mugureshis. Rav Chista answered, she's Mugureshis. When it's in Sidush Saram, she's divorced. This is the, the second version. Why? Because Rav Nachman, as Rav Nachman had said, Bitsidush Saram, Kagam Domi. Because this area alongside Rush Saram is like the swamp. Adra, but ain't Mugureshis. Midrabu Shmuel, my love. Why? Because this is my love. Hanush Saram, Hanush Sidush Saram. Just as they said, Rosh Hashanah is not a location you could, could acquire. So the area alongside Rosh Hashanah is an area you can't acquire. Lo, Rosh Hashanah lechud v'tzidush lechud. No, it's two separate areas. Rosh Hashanah has one status, and the area alongside is similar to the Agam. So therefore, she's mukoreshes if the get is in Rosh Hashanah. Hamoshev, okay. Hamoshev is ishto chanvonis. Right? Person, his wife, she runs the store for him. Right? She oversees it. O Shemina Apitropio. Or she, she was the overseer of his, his properties. She was an administrator of all his business affairs, his household affairs. That means what did she have? She had access to a lot of money. So there's a question what? Maybe she siphoned off something for herself. So now she comes to collect the ksuba. So, so what, what, did, what, what, what did the heiress say to her? You know something? Maybe you already collected it. You already took off some for yourself. Therefore, she has to swear. 
Hareza Mashbia, Kozma Shiritsa, the husband could even. Let's say he divorces her. Now she comes to the Ksuba, she says, you know, because you were involved with all my money, maybe you took something already for yourself. So as a result of that, he has a right to impose a shvud as a rabbinic oath. Kozma Shiritsa. Whenever the husband wants, he could impose the oath, say, I want you to swear that you didn't take anything. Kozma Shiritsa, one second. Now, this shvur, normally whenever a person imposes a shvur on somebody else, you always have to have a tiny bori. Let's say it's a company, you say, I lent you $100. Right? So the one comes again, I, I lent you owe me $100. The person responds, says, I owe you nothing. That's called kofrakol. On a Torah level, you don't swear. Right? But let's say I come to you and I say, rabbinically, you have to swear. Rabbinically, you have to swear. Well, let's say I come to you and I say, I, f you know, but I think you owe me $100. I didn't say with definition, you definitely owe me. You say, I, you think? That's called a tiny shema. If you come with, with not a definite claim, even on a rabbinic level, there's no shvur. Over here, the husband doesn't know whether she took any of the money. Yet, despite the fact they legislated that he has a right to impose a shvur on her, to swear that she didn't take any of the money. Okay? So, of course, we'll discuss this in a minute in the Gemara. Hamoshevus ishto chavodas a shvur o shemidim apitropio. Harezim ashmikos manshi reblezo omer afila pilcho valisosa. She doesn't have to even be an administrator, or she doesn't have to run the store. A woman, she goes and she darns and she knits, and what she does, she bakes bread in the house. You know, maybe she took off a little bit of bread, a wheat, uh, dough, sold it off. Do you know what it is? She doesn't have to be involved with big amounts, of, large amounts of money, with the business affairs. Even the household chores, you never know. So Rebbe Leza says, he even has a right to impose a shvu, even at that level. So it seems to be the Tanakama argues with this. No. If she's an administrator or, you know, she's in a, a, a position where it's tempting, you're dealing with so much money, mm -hmm. so therefore, and she's in a position of what? Of power? You never know what she could do. But Pilcha and Isosa not, because the Gemara is going to say an interesting. Could you imagine a husband micromanaging a wife? Yeah? Micromanaging a wife, you know? You know, maybe you ate an extra morsel of food. Mm -hmm. woman says, you know, I can't, I can't exist within this marriage. If the Chazal would say he has a right to impose a shu even on that, you know something? You're destroying the marriage. Because the husband, you have a type of person, you know, I want you to swear you didn't, you didn't take any yarn out of the basket. You didn't take off a p an extra piece of dough. No, so Mar that's what it comes. He says you can't do it, but no, the, uh, whatever it is. Well, the Gemara's going to ask, maybe it's only out through Gilgal. No, we'll see. But the Gemara is going to prove Rebbe Leza holds even not through Gilgal. He could directly, even though she does, she's not, was never an administrator, even though she never ran the store for him, he could say direct, because the Chachom respond to him, says you can't do it. Because if, if you allow him to impose the Shur, even on that, you're destroying the marriage. Okay, we'll see the Gemara. Iboilu, the Gemara asked the question, Rebbe Leza, al yidei Gilgal komar, ul chadchil komar. Here is Shaiva. Now, what's a Gilgal Shur? Let's say, Normally, a kofar a kol doesn't swear. If I, you come to me with a claim, you owe me $100. I say, oh, you're nothing. You don't have to swear on a Torah level. What about I come with two claims? I say, I let you $100. I say, I only owe you 50 You have to swear on a Torah level. That's called motive makes us. That's a partial admission. And my second claim is, I lent you $100 another date. You say, I don't know you. The second claim, could I impose on you a Torah oath? The answer is yes. Once you start swearing on a Torah level, on one situation, I could shift it over to the other situation and demand that you should swear. I mean, initially to start there, you can't start there. Well, let's say you don't swear on fixed property. Let's say I, I, I say to you, uh, you sold me, I, you come to me, say, I paid you for two pieces of property, and you say you only paid me for one. So we're talking about, we're talking about karka. Fixed property, you don't swear to. What about if we have two, two, two different discussions? I have a monetary claim, and I have, we're talking about the fixed property. Once you swear on the monetary, the movables, you swear on the fixed property. It's, that's the concept of the Gilgal. So the question is here, when the husband has a right to impose the oath, which is rabbinical, even on the yarn or even on the dough, is that where it's not she's an administrator? It's not you started with the store or with the, the administrator, and then you, you're shifting over to the basket. But no, straight out. You know, maybe I'm imposing an oath that maybe you took some of the yarn out of the basket. Maybe you, you, you took off a piece of dough and you sold it off. 
right? So where did Rebbe Lezer say you could you can oppose the old Sumer says Iboilu, al de gil komar, ol chatchilu komar, or maybe ol chatchilu directly, demand an oath. Toshma, Omer lo the Rebbe Lezer, the Chacham said Rebbe Lezer, in Odom Dorim nochish bekvifa bekvifa. If you're going to post that kind of oath, the woman says, I can't live with a snake in the same basket, in the, in, under, in, under the same roof. So says, if you say the husband could affront it directly, I want you to swear directly to man. The woman says, what kind of relationship is this? You don't trust me? We can't be together. But if in any way is she swearing, what difference does it make? I mean, this, he's, he's not micromanaging my life. But once, he's already swearing, making me swear, maybe I took some money from the store or from the, 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 the family kitty. It's another story. Might have Kolomino. Dormal, I came with the Kodaikas, Basroi, Kulahai, Lomatsino. The other, the other, says, no, came with the Kodaikas, Basroi, Kulahai, Lomatsino, the other Badoch. He says, look, if you, you so put me under the microscope that every little penny makes a difference to you, that's already too much. Yeah, it doesn't. So there's no proof. There's no proof from there. It's like, you know something, it's like a, a man is upset with his wife. Comes home, the house is a mess. Okay, he has a right. He says, by the way, what about I opened up a small area and I found something not neat? You know something? You want about the house, that's one thing. You try to make an issue over nothing. You, you're already going to the minutia. That tells you, you know something. You're looking. You're looking to pick a fight. That's where the wife sees it. That's what kind of relationship do we have? So even now, they giggle. So there's no proof from there. But the Gemara brings a brice explicit. Toshma hareish lo poter is ishto min aneder min ashvur. Now the Gemara says in, in Gittin, in the Mishnah, Reb Gamliel legislated normally a person could impose an oath on his wife, but it's not a good thing. You're going to make your wife swear. So he says that what you should do is this. You say to, to, to the wife, I, if, in fact, I want you to make a netter, to make a netter, that if you took anything of mine, all my assets are off limits to you. That's what he says to the wife. You claim you're honest, make a netter. Not take an oath, because an oath should be a false oath. Take a netter. Or you take it. See, he's not important. You may take it yourself. Okay? So let's say he says to her, I reach lopotis ishtom in a netter yeah? He didn't absolve her from that. Voshiva chenvonius o apitropia. He put her, he installed her as the storekeeper or to be the administrator. Aresa mashbiya calls machiyirza, right? He could actually, because since he didn't absolve of that, that oath or that neder, he could impose the shvu whenever he wants. What about lo hoshiva chenvonius, velo mina apitropia, any ocho lo The chachom say no. Maybe she took off some of the yarn out of her knitting basket, or that, that he can't. That's the chachom. Rebeleza Omer, api shlo shiva chen bonus lo mina api tropia. You hear this? He says explicitly. Even if he'd never appointed her to be the administrator or the storekeeper, hareze mashbia kos manchi yirtze. So what does that mean? That means directly, not Gilgal. She'en lo ha'isha shal nasas api tropia sho'achas b'chei ba'ilo al pilcho v'al isosa. He's saying, because what difference does it make if it's running a store or it's the, the basket of yarn? It's all the same. If you suspect she may have siphoned off some money, what what is it's larger amount of money or a small amount of money? Omar Lo said the say, "Ain't not mador in nochish b'kvifa." Because you understand, in every relationship, you have to be able to look away a little bit. If we're talking about large amounts of money, okay, it's one thing. But if you're going to make an issue over a little bit of yarn, a little bit of dough, the woman can't live. Why? Shmamino lechatchil shmamino says. As a result, we see clearly, it's not. He said explicitly, even if she was never the apitropis, or she was never the storekeeper. Just for the yarn itself, directly, he could actually ask her to swear. Okay, good. Kosov lo, Kosov lo, hear this. What happens when he marries originally? He says to this, he says to her, Ein Kosov lo nedushwe eli olayich. He says, I will not, the woman says, you know, I'll marry you. I don't want you to make my life complicated. I'll only marry you on the condition that you absolve me of all oaths and all vows. When we get married, that you can't impose anything. And he agrees to it. He agrees. So therefore, now she becomes a storekeeper. He can't force her to make a shu take a shvur. Because he, he read that was, that was when they get married. He agreed. He will not. He wrote, I absolve you of any obligation to swear. In advance. Okay. 
and Yochel Ashbiyah. As much as he may suspect or whatever it is, he cannot impose the Shua. Alva Mashbiyah, who is Yorshel, what about now she dies? And the Yorshim, they inherit the Ksuba, right? Her heirs, remember we spoke about the Nechsei Muluk, or we speak about the Nedunya, what she brought into the marriage, right? She, she has a right, he has a right to impose on the heirs. By the way, before your mother died, did you, are you aware of anything? They have to swear we're not aware of anything. He has a right to impose that because he only absolved the wife of the Shvua, not, not the heirs. Anybody who comes in her place to inherit, right, he has a right to impose the Shvua. Are you aware of that she took anything? What about he, he absolved not only her, her heirs, anybody who comes in a place to take? So he absolved everybody. Right? Whoever comes to collect, he can't say, swear before I pay. He can't say that because he absolved everybody. That's when she originally got married. He let them all free, right? He let them all off. But what about he dies? And now his estate has to pay out. You got it? His estate. So now his heirs say to the wife or to the people coming to place their wife, we want you to swear. Mm -hmm. They have a right to impose it. Because only the husbands, I will not impose the oath. But whose money is it now? The heirs inherit it. You want us to pay. You claim you have a claim to our, our estate. You swear that if you take anything, then we'll give you. Because the husband only absolved him from what? From that he wouldn't impose. That's what it says. But his heirs could impose the Shavuot. What about he wrote when he married her, Nodar, excuse me, Nedu Shuaili Li Yorshai He says, Not me or my heirs have a claim against anybody, you or anybody comes in your place. Okay? Because he absolved all of them. Simple. Let's say he didn't absolve her. And she wasn't a storekeeper. She went straight from the, from, the cem from the cemetery. She went straight back to her father's household. So she couldn't take any money. Her husband's money, the, the, the money, or the, the heir's money wasn't available. How could she take some money? Or she went back to the house of her father-in-law. And she didn't have any, any access to cash, right? Because she wasn't an administrator. And Yorshamash, being also, right? They can't demand the shvur. What are you going to demand the shvur? For what? She never had access to money. What about... After they died, the, the estate of the, of, the, of the heirs, she became the overseer. She became the administrator. Oh, Mashbin also. Then they could, because it's the same story. Maybe you, you should watch it. You took some money and you justified it. Hear yeah, what's going on here. Now she was appointed to be the administrator of, she was the administrator of the father and the administrator of the heirs. The children, okay? And now, now let, let's say the, even her own children. Her own children, right? And now she, she, the, she, as a widow, she has a right to collect the ksuba, even though her children, but her, her wife doesn't inherit her husband. So who inherited the estate? The kids. So the father, their father, which was her husband, said when he married her, I will not impose an oath on you under any circumstances, or my children cannot, okay? So... Regarding when, before the husband died, that was, his, that was his assets, they can't impose an oath on the past. What about going forward? Once the, the, the children appointed her to be the minister on their, on their estate, they could. So Allah Osid, what was going forward, they could demand an oath. But on the past, that they can't demand an oath. Okay, that's what the mission concludes. The Nasus Abitrob HaYorshim HaShbin Oso Allah Osid, on the future of Allah, Eim HaShbin Oso Al Masha Ovar. But what passed, that they have no right, because the father absolved her of anything that had to do with his estate. Okay? Norman, you're okay with this? Of course, it's, it's his property. It's his property. No, but he told up advance. If I don't want to give away my properties, I have a right to 
the wife married on the condition that your heirs know him. No, they're imposing the oath that he took when he was alive. My heirs have no right to impose an oath that I took from. Not the, it's not the, it's his. It was his. So how could they? Impo- how could it? You got it. Right, the wife of the husband. That she, maybe she embezzled some of the some of the money of the father. Why not? Why shouldn't he be able? To? It's his money. He can't say. He can't say. You, my wife cannot. My my children cannot impose an oath on you, if you're the administrator after I die on their property. Could the father say that? Of course not. He can't. He, that's not his to say. He's saying, my heirs cannot demand an oath. After I die, or what you what you what you controlled when I was alive, that's what we're talking about. All right, that makes sense. Okay, let's see the Gemara. Shvu Maya Vidito. Right, the Shvu that we talk. What is she taking this oath on? Omer Avud Omer Rav, Al Abitropa Shenas Bechay Bailo. She's swearing on the time she was an administrator in the time of what husband's life that she didn't take any of the money. Second. So what does he say? So this absolvement, he's absolving her of the assets when he was alive. Rashi. When he absolved them from the shua, what about a woman? The husband started to pay off the ksuba to a degree. When he was alive, he says, you know something, I don't want to have a problem later, I'll stop paying it off. And she admits it was paid off. If she admits it was paid off, then we suspect, just as it was paid off this much, maybe it was paid off a lot more. So the, the somim, the, the heirs, could say, we want you to swear that it was only this much and no more. No, if their husband dies. As afterwards, the husband absolved him, her, of swearing. So we're saying that's only regarding as an administrator. But regarding her ksuba, let's say he started, the father pay, started to pay off the ksuba when he was alive. What, when he was alive? He paid it off. He says, look, I don't want you to have complications later. I have cash available. Here's some money for the future. Okay? So th- even though he absolved her, that oath he didn't absolve her. The oath as an administrator, maybe she embezzled. Then there's a concern. Maybe she embezzled some. Right? That's your absolve. But this is something else. It's the chipot the koromi aloh. But the shua which she asked to be paid off, this she, she herself came to the husband and he says, I want you to pay off some of the ksuba. So now we have a question. Right? How much did he pay? Okay. Rav Nachman Omer Rabba Ravua al Pogemis Ksubosa. You this? <coughs> when he absolved her of the shua, it's even the case of Pogemis Ksubosa. She admits that what? The husband paid off some of the ksuba. You swear it's that and no more. So is it just, is it going in Apitropis or is it going in Pegebis Ksuboso? Also, Rav Mordechai, Omer Dushmait, Skami the Ravashi. See, one, he, he said over what he did with this argument. Review the said name of Rav, it's going in Apitropis. <coughs> and Rav Nachman said name of Rav Rabu, it's going on Pegebis Ksuboso. He says, Bishlam Lamania Pegebis Ksuboso, the Maska Adaito. Hear this? A woman, when she enters into a, into a marriage, right? So when a woman gets married, she gets a ksuba, correct? She gets a ksuba. So what, what, what does she think? You never know. Down the road, I meet, may need some extra money, so I'll go to my husband. I'll ask him to pay off a little bit. It's not unusual. So because this is something which is in her mind, so when she originally married, she says, I want you to absolve me from an oath, that's what she meant, because she understood this, this is ine- inevitable to happen. Every wife may need some extra money, and she asks her husband to pay her off a little bit towards the ksuba, because, for, because she needs extra cash at hand. So, so, so she said to him, because she's aware this is, is coming up, I want you to give me a document. You're absolving me from swearing on, on the balance, that I don't have to swear that I can take more than that. On the balance. But if we're saying absolving, if, if, if she's appointed to be administrator over the assets of her husband, 
He may have a yodah, the most of Lapi Trapia. They get married, she doesn't have two, he doesn't have two nickels to his name. Right? He has nothing. So he says, you know something? Maybe he'll appoint me as an administrator. Administrator of what? And also, when she originally gets married, she has no experience in anything. Does she think in the future she's going to be an administrator? So this is not in the forefront of her mind. Something which is inevitable, like the Ksuba. Okay. So therefore, she asks for that absolvement, to be freed of that oath. But the other, why? So therefore, he says, so Ravashi says, what Rav Nachman says makes sense. That when he wrote her, the, 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 the absolvement, it's going on what? For the Ksuba. But not Tapi Tropis. So, so he answered him, Atuna homas He says, because you learn it, it's going on the ratio, therefore you have the problem. She went from the cemetery after she buried the husband back to Beisovia. Right? That's the conclusion of the Mishnah, right at the end of the Mishnah. Or she went back to her father's household. And she didn't become an administrator. And a Yorshim has been also. The Yorshim have no right to what? To impose an oath. Right? Because there's nothing, there's nothing to talk about. What about if she did become the administrator? Oh, so now it's, she's coming back. Could you please be our... So now they're, 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 they're inviting her. They're offering her a position. Be the administrator. So she says, you want to be the administrator? I want you to absolve me from the oath. You got it? So now it's, it's not something, what's, I'm not sure what's that coming down the pike. There's a fact. She's coming back. Her husband died. The kids have an estate. They ask her, could you please admit it to the estate for us? She says, no problem. But you know, I don't want you, you, make my, I don't want you to make my life difficult. Come, if you absolve me from swearing, when I want to collect the ksuba, I'm agreeable. Otherwise, I'm not agreeable. So they give it, they, 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 they absolve her. That's why. Here. What do you mean? You hear this? So she's asking then, I want to be absolved from the past. Anything I did while I was married to your father, I want to be absolved that you can't impose an oath on me. That's what she says. Future, okay. I will be misa l'kvura. Mash bi'inlo. But from the misa to the kvura, right, this is afterwards. They're, they're presenting it with the what? Right? From, but, but between the death and the grave, you know, maybe that she put her hand in the till at that time. They, they, they have, they'll oppose. They'll oppose. For Romu nichsei kami yasmi. Because they ain't t'nai shalom. Mo'el bohem. That, that they have a right to impose the oath. The moment the father died, they have a right to impose the oath on that. Because that that the father absolved him when he was alive, that had nothing to do with that. Correct? Even between Misa and Kvura not, the Amri Nerdoi Lecharga Lumzonu Lekvura Mezavnino Bloch Rasta. You know, normally whenever you sell properties, let's say you have a, a creditor. And he wants to, he says, you know, so I waited long enough for my money. And he says, you know, you have properties, I'm taking the property. We'll do a fire sale. The business is no fire sale. Because you have no right to what's his name because it's going to hurt the person. Because if you advertise it and words out there, you're going to get the best price. But if you don't advertise it, you're not going to get the best price. What about the woman needs to be fed? You say, the, 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 the heirs, they ever, you know, you wait. You know, we're going to put it on the market for the next six months. Then afterwards, we'll, the woman has to be fed today. We have to cover burial expenses. Well, we want to get the best. We're going to talk about how we're going to cover the burial expenses. So therefore, there's no delay. There's no delaying. We don't, we don't, we don't put it out there in the market to see to get the best price. So get, what about paying taxes for the king? Right? Of course, it's a question of borrowing money. Whatever. No. What do you do? You sell the property. You pay off the tax to the king. Immediate. Omer Abar Omer Achio Dlo Nodar Dlo Neder Dlo Shua Hu Eni Yochel Ashbia. He says, I will not make you make a neder. I will not make you take an oath. The husband can't impose the shua, right? Avol Yorshim Ashbia Nosa. Right. That's the Mishnah. That's the Mishnah. What about 
Noki nedun, noki shua. What, what, what happens if you use the, the term? If he says, lo neder, lo shua, yeah, it's important. There will be no neder, there will be no shua. Right? There will be no, then he cannot impose the oath. But what about if he dies? His heirs can. What about he says, noki, you're absolved. It's a stronger term. You're absolved. That means you as a person absolved of swearing or making a netter. Then that includes even the ocean. Because it's a, I'm saying, know that there will be and not be a netter, so the understanding that means I will not impose. Noki means you're absolved. What, 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 it's a stronger term. That means nobody will be able to demand that of you, meaning even his heirs. Regarding the assets of the father, we're talking about regarding the assets of the father. Okay? Noki neder, noki shua, ben hu, ben yoshin, mesh bin osa. Hachi komodo. Menakis mishuosa. Noki means you're absolved, fully absolved from taking the oath. Here, right? Where is it? No, this is the father originally said it. The father said it. No, I, but the first is. No, no, it can't be it. No, it can't be after the death. Because it's their, it's their assets. It's their assets. I mean, after he dies, I mean, now, what happened before he dies, the, the heirs cannot impose the oath. But let's say there's a question, maybe she took some of theirs after you. That's a different story. Yeah. Rav Yosef Omar Rab. Rav Yosef Omar Rab Chiyo. Lo ned lo shuo heinu yocho lashbiyo. He says... He says not he, before we said the low ned lo shua. He says the low ned lo shua who ain't yochol ashbi avu yorshim ashbi nosa. Noki neder, noki shua, just the opposite. Bein who bein yorshim ashbi nosa. What? Why? What does that mean? You mean vindicate yourself. Noki means vindicate yourself with a shua, not absolve. You're absolved, but you if you you come you, and you're suspected, you you must vindicate yourself through a no through through a neder. Okay. Vindicate yourself through swearing. So they're arguing what exactly was the intention of the father when he used the term Niki. Just to the contrary. What's the olive? What about he, he says from my properties? What if he says Nichson from these properties? Yeah, if he added from these properties, then, then already it's it's he's saying more than that. If he says he just absolved from the Shua, regardless of whatever language he uses, it means him. He doesn't mean his heirs. But if he says from this property, that means, this property means nobody regarding this property could demand you to, to take an oath when that property was mine. It's, only, it's, oh, it's always when it was his. No, but the claim is, what did she do when it was his? Omer Rav Nachum Shmuel Mishma Bishol Ben Emo Ben Emo Miriam. Okay? Omer Rav Nachum Shmuel Mishum Abishol Ben Emo Miriam. Interesting. Very rarely do you find a person called by his mother, the son of a mother. Only Rami Baroche. Right? Rami, the son of Rochel, because she was raped. Of course, the father was a goy. No, no, no. He was a goy over there. But he, I don't know. Abishol ben Emma Miriam. Nobody says why he was called Emma. He said, hasn't he in the footnote there? Why he was called Emma Miriam. Okay. Bain lo shua, bain de noki shua, bain lo neder, bain de noki neder, bain min chosai, bain min nichshin elin, bain hu, bain yosho, bain mishmin osa. Hear this? Either way, none. Av ma'ese, he says, although that, that's what I hold, right? That nobody, av ma'ese, shari chach omru chach omim, habol di purim nichshi shom li di lo yifra ele bishua. Lo lem yorshim ma'ashmin osa imesu vihid nifras mehim. Vigadi Amri lo masliso. 
Abashor ben Eim Miriam, Omar ben lo Shua ben the Noki, Shua ben lo Neder ben Noki Neder ben Nechos ben Nechashi Elon, who ben Yoshev Eimash Minosa. Al Maesa Shri Omer Chachomim, Purim Nechshishom lo Yifra el Beshua Omer Av Nachman Shmuel, Halochet ben Eim Miriam, that what, that they could impose the Shua. One second. No. Eimash Minosa. We rule like a mirror that you saw me. If the father said any one of these terminologies, she's absolved. They cannot demand a shur from her. If that language means she's free and clear. They cannot demand a shur from her. Okay. Hapogemis b'chsuboso. Lo sifra el Right, a woman who already started to collect on the ksuba. And now she wants to collect the balance. No, the balance. So we make a switch, say, that's all you got. You didn't get more than that. Eirechod mi'ido shiprua. What about an eirechod? Let's say, let's say I say you owe me $100. Norman, I say you owe me $100 and you deny it. You, you, you deny it. But you bring an eirechod. A single witness says, I was there. So Eid Echod obligates a shvur, right? You have to swear. Because he has an Eid Echod supporting his claim. So let's say an Eid Echod would say, the document you have has been paid off. The woman comes with a ksuba, and the, and the husband has an Eid Echod that he paid. He claims he paid. It means nothing. She has a document. She, she yo, but you paid. What am I doing with, with, with the document? So, so you, you have to pay. What about he brings an Eid Echod and says, he witnessed that I paid. Not, no, she has to, it's Eid Echod. Eid Echod mechai v'shvur. Eid Echod obligates you to pay. No, this is a tie, separate. First, this, separate. Right, right. Okay. Habayim v'shvur, lo sifra ele b'shvur. Eid Echod me'ido shiprua, lo sifra ele b'shvur. She can only collect with it. It's a chiddush. It's a chiddush. I'll tell you why it's a chiddush. The chiddush is like this. The document is a viable document, right? There's no question of forgery. If the document has two witnesses on it, so it's two against one. Two witnesses say you owe. One witness says you don't know. Do you, do you even pay attention to the single witness? So over here she has a star. She has a star and says what? You owe the money. She has the ksuba. So what? But the Ksuba says differently. Right? We say, Okay, we'll see the Gemara. Okay? Alec, what's the base? Lucifer al Bishwa. Min the Chosim Shubod Nixa Yusomim. Shalom before him. Yeah, if you're collecting from. The nix, from nixay, the chosim shubadim, you're going to the lien properties, or from the assets of the somim, which is the same thing. It's leaned, it's linked to the ksuba. Shlo b'fonov. Yet there, what about he's not here? He's overseas. Lo sifre lo b'shuah. Also, mishum di yavi gabi govi min alove gufe ton lovi shtabali lo pratiho. I mean, we should use the mashbina law, the law toy, law tanina lay, hove and nokit stora. I'll be sure the kuchs anam tanina. You're saying like this. Let's say a lover comes, you come with a document, and I say, I paid. You have to, rabbinically, you have to swear. Why? Because the Gemara says, because it's, it's possible, the reason why you still have the document is because I didn't pay the sofa fees. Remember, we spoke about when you borrow this, it's called pshiti de safra. Did the money. So the man says, you know, you, you didn't return the document because I, I didn't pay you fully, pay you for, for the expenses. It's possible. Therefore, rabbinically, you have to swear. On Torah, you don't, but rabbinically, you have to. What about if the man comes and the man doesn't say anything? Let's say the man's away. The man's away. Right? He comes to the family and he says, you know, or he comes to me and says, you know, I lent the man money, pay the document. Pay, pay the debt. And, and he pays. Does business say, oh, by the way, you know something? You don't pay unless, what's his name, unless you swear. Because it's possible, theoretically, that it may have been paid off. That would be called taninon. We don't, just as the lover, if you come to a lover, he doesn't say a word, he wants to pay. Do we say, oh, by the way, you know, maybe you don't remember you paid? We don't say such a thing. 
You don't bring it up yourself, we don't bring it up for you either. Right? What about the chos mishubotim? What about you going to other people? That means you're collecting from people who are not the borrower. It's possible they didn't think of it. Maybe they're being duped. So the Bezdin intervenes and says, you know something? It's possible it was paid. And the reason why you have the documents is because you didn't pay the sofa fees. Right? Therefore, you, Bezdin says, you want to collect, you have, you have to swear. You have to swear. But that's only when you're going to. You should him to a third party. Then it's Tanina. This Rashi explains. Take a look in Rashi. Bishum the Abagaban min alova gufe, vavi ton le, ishtabali, lo prati, I mean, bishu is the majbinin le. If the love would say, I paid it, you'd have to swear. Vi lo ton, lo tanin le. But let's say he doesn't. The man believes if you have that hoil, vinokit shtor, avo bishvil le kuchos. But for the third part, on the taninon, vil me havi govis, min alova, avi ton, ton loch, ishtabali. Right? Because maybe. If the lover would have been asked, he would have said it. You're not going to the lover today. Maybe if the lover would be, he would have said it. Lo praticho, ubas ishtabui, hashta not tenin the psach pichol ilim. There's an expression in the Gemara. Open, open the mouth of the mute one. He's mute. They, they don't know what to say. Do they know whether it's paid or not? Umedich say yisomi nifras shelo befonov. Kul mishum haytam. The same thing. If you're going to collect from the Nechassim of the Yisomim when he's not here, he died. Same thing. If he would have been alive, maybe the father would have said, I paid. Therefore, we could say, you, want, you know something? If he would have said he paid, pay, you'd have to swear. He's not here today, you have to swear. Right? Very logical. What is Pogemis Ksuboso? Hoi Ksuboso Elav Zuz. The Ksubo is worth a thousand dollars. Vama Lo, his Kabalt Ksubosech. Yeah? And she says, I paid it. That's what the husband says to the wife. I paid it. Vio Merslos Kabalt Lelemona. She says, No, you only paid a hundred to the thousand. There's a nine hundred dollar balance. So she's admitting. That, so that means it's already been. A dent was put into the Ksubo. Poge. Poge me, right? There's a Pagam. Since she's admitting that, no, it's not because this is, she, this is nishba and no tail. Motomix says it's always nishba and niftar. But it's a similar idea. There's already where the smoke is fire. If you're already admitting that what? It was partially paid, it may have all been paid. You want to collect the balance, you, got, you have to swear. Right? Eid Echod Meido Shiprua. Ketzad. What's the Eid Echod? Hoisok Subosa Elav Zuz, Omalis Kabalt Subosech. The husband says, I paid off the whole ksuba. V, Omer, Slos, Kabalt. She says, I never got a dime. You never paid a dime. That's what the woman says. He says, no, he did pay off. Losifra Ella Bishua. Right? You have to pay with it. You have to swear. What's the case of Nechos Bishubodim? Mocha Nechos Bishubodim. He went and sold his properties to a third party. And he has no free, free assets. Right? She has no way to collect from him. So if you want to collect from them, you have to swear that you didn't collect them, and then you can collect the document from them. So the assets are leaned to the Ksuba, correct? The estate is leaned to the Ksuba. What's the case? He's not around. The man's not around. He went overseas. She goes to the administrator. Ain't in the fras ella b'shua. You have to swear. Reb Shimon Omer Kozma she tovas ksubosa yorshim hashvin also. Any time she comes to collect the ksuba, yorshim have a right to demand a shua. The meino tovas ksubosa and the yorshim hashvin also. You have to say what this means. If she's not tovas, why should they make her swear? Right? What? No, she claims she, she, the, some don't say a word. Some say we don't know what happened. No, because the, the, the estate is linked to the Ksuba. No, it is linked, but, but the Yusom said, but we don't, maybe our father paid you. Maybe our father paid you. So that's why she has to swear. It's 
It's possible. We don't know. No, but why? Why? No, if she, she's not asking Suba, what do you mean? In Yoshin Mashbinos? Of, of course, I mean that. That's I don't know. No, you have to understand what that's going on. That's the Gemara says. What the Gemara? The Rashi says. Okay, we have we have a minute. Sovera mi yochom l'me mishu. Shua do raisa katoim. Shua do raisa. The mission which says Mashbin is a Shua do raisa. The Kohen Ton Mosayim. The Komodo le bimeyo. Havali held up bixis at Taino. No, 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 no. One second. Shua do raisa that Rashi is the map. Gemino lo mafchino lo. Even the Mars says in Shua, yeah, you have mafchino lo. We will continue.